Hello everyone and welcome back to my uh, tutorial campaign in Realistic Progression Zero, the campaign mod for the Realism Overhaul suite of Realism Mods for Kerbal Space Program. In the last episode, uh, <laughs> well, things didn't quite go to plan. Uh, we managed to put Robin 5 into orbit, but uh, the uh, 11D33 engine on our our transmarge ejection stage failed halfway through the burn. So Robin 5 is now in a tundra orbit around the Earth. Uh, it's acting as basically yet another comm station. Robin 6, we did succeed in getting on its way, although we had every single engine in the first stage fail. Uh, first, one of the, the center engine failed. Thank goodness it was the center engine for thrust balancing. Uh, then one of the side engines had a performance loss, and then it failed, and then the last engine failed because they were burning over the rated burn time. Um, I had to pitch up a lot because we had lowered thrust. Um, second stage was fine. We got that into barely into orbit, but it meant that we had to burn oh about 300 meters per second off the probe's propellant to get us on our transmars trajectory. Uh, that was also due to Mechjeb seeming to give me the wrong node information. Uh, so we burned extra, then we burned reverse again to get an encounter. Uh, and then lastly, uh, to top everything off, I looked in map view exactly how much it would cost to capture at Mars, just the absolute, absolute minimum, given the lowest possible uh, Mars periapsis. And it was about 45 meters per second more than the delta V of the probe if I hadn't burned anything. So I also underestimated just how much it would take to capture there, which meant that even had things gone perfectly, I probably couldn't have captured, um, unless I did some, some other hijinks, just because of how off-optimal this transfer was. Uh, but we are going to complete our Mars contract, assuming that nothing else goes wrong, because we are going to complete this Mars flyby. Uh, we have a fine-tuning maneuver in 34 days, uh, where we will lower our existing Mars flyby altitude to something much more reasonable. I added some alarms for further uh, Mars transfers. This conjunction, conjunctive transfer, that's going to have a crap ton of excess velocity, and that was really only good for a flyby. This opposition one is probably going to have a maybe 2200 meters per second capture requirement, after which we can aero break down to um, something more reasonable, and then finally raise the periapsis up to circular. Um, really, though, we're not going to get a good number, I think, for a while yet. Uh, closer and more relevant, we do have a Venus window coming up, which is quite cheap. Um, it's in less than a year now, uh, so we could send a Venus orbiter. Um, with, I think, fairly similar um, stats to the, the Mars orbiter that we just attempted, um, accepting the fact that we don't need to send any goo samples, because, bio samples, because we've already been to Venus. Um, so that's something to, to think about. Uh, we also can think about rejiggering that to include a ScanSat uh, scanner. Now, conveniently, three biosamples is about the same mass as a ScanSat scanner. So I think it's it's worth considering taking that Venus scanning mission. Um, so that window is coming up. And on the closer to home front, we have, if we look in tech, improved stage combustion coming due in 41 days, miniaturization in 193 days, after which point we'll be able to use the Ranger Block 3 core, which will make life a lot easier. Uh, and uh, when do we get the better dish? Let's find out. Miniaturization. Does, is this the thing that has the dish? No, that's an adapter. Alright, so really the only relevant thing is the Ranger core. Uh, I think this is where we actually get the good dish. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. Alright. That's not going to be for a while because it's expensive and queued up later. So, yeah. Um, so I think 
The other thing we can look into doing is gradually extending our geostationary network. Uh, and we can start doing scans of the Earth and the Moon. Uh, we've got hot. We're not going to capture into Mercury orbit anytime soon, that's for sure. Um, okay, so how much does this actually give us? Oh, that's that's a pretty decent chunk of change. We don't necessarily have to combine it with a place a satellite in specific orbit of the moon. Especially since we're not going to put a film return camera anywhere there. This one has a bio sample, and that's way too high for a scan set orbit. So, yeah. I think what we might as well do is test out our scanning abilities uh, in the, the near areas. We don't have to use as large a rocket to do these things. Um, and so let's go ahead and select these. Uh, their deadlines are ludicrous, if memory serves. Oh, no, they're two years, and then three years. All right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let's design a simple uh, scanning probe that will scan the Earth for us, and then launch it. Oops. Yeah, so this was our... Yeah, we also have to consider something similar to this for Venus. Um, but I think for now we're just going to start fresh. Um, just for being in Earth orbit, we don't need a calm dish. We don't need... Um, any of that fancy stuff. We just need this thing. Ten million dollars. That's a small price to pay. Um, and so downside, of course, is that is that aligned? I think that's aligned. Uh, the downside is that it is 50 kilograms, and we don't really have anything to balance it with. And it uses 200 watts, so it's going to need a fair amount of solar power behind it. Uh, next, we're going to need some antennas. Let's extend this on out. So that's what it's going to look like extended. So we can go ahead and put a couple antennas over here. Oh, that's only one. I did say a couple, didn't I? All right. And now we can put on little EB RCS jets. Uh, I think actually we're not going to put the antennas there. We're going to put solar panels there. Because we need a fair amount of solar panels. This will give us 240 watts if they're aligned properly, and that should be enough. Uh, all right, so now we'll put the RCS on, as soon as I figure out where the RCS went. There it is. Um, all right, and we'll move the solar panel. such that the RCS won't get caught with it. All right, so we're going to action group the RCS to six. And unlike last time, we're going to turn it off for each of them, because apparently this is not a symmetry action. Oops. All right, and that RCS is kind of just hanging out there. All right, so let's make it look less dopey. And do that. All right, that will work. Uh, 
and we need solar panels on one and antenna right at the end there's the antenna um, Oh, that's <laughs> sitting down there. Okay. And let's put the antennas on two, as is tradition. Okay, and we'll call this scan one. All right. Now, we definitely don't need as much electric charge as it th thinks we do. We're going to need a maximum of... If we don't get a sun synchronous orbit, a maximum of what? 40 minutes? 45 minutes without electric charge? Um, but actually, that's going to be a fair amount because 0 0.20, let's call it 210 watts draw times 60 is a minute times 45. Okay, so that's 567. Um, okay, so that's not actually that bad. So if we put a half watt hour in here, it should be fine. Which means we can go ahead and fill the rest of it with RCS propellants. That's a fairly large quantity of RCS propellant. Um, and lastly, we'll give it a small, what are we up to, 223? We'll give it a small extra tank worth of them and an engine. Uh, smooth cone, gold foil, bottom is 100 millimeters, about like that, I think. Service module. Engine, one kilonewton thruster, uh, MMH and NTO. That's a little bit much, so a little less. Now, I wonder what obvious thing I'm forgetting, because presumably I'm forgetting something, because that's how this works. Um, Let's verify. We've got our solar panels. We've got our scan thingy. We've got a rather ridiculous quantity of delta V. Uh, we've got antennas. We've got RCS. Uh, we really don't need anything else. Uh, now, conveniently, this will also have enough delta V to insert at the moon. Um, so we can reuse this both for Earth orbit and for lunar orbit. Um, so that's cool. Now let's go ahead and get a launch vehicle for it. There's a launch vehicle for it. Um, so we're launching to polar orbit. So let's subtract 12. Yeah, this is this is plenty of delta V. We will not burn all of our second stage just to get this into polar orbit. Okay. So build one of these. And then we need to basically do the same thing for the moon. Um and the tragic thing, the truly tragic thing, is that we don't have a launch vehicle for that. Because 300 kilograms TLI, well, um, that's, I mean, we were throwing what, one point, what is that? Yeah, 1.75 tons TLI. Um, we don't need a full-up launch vehicle for that. Um, 
I mean, really what we'd want to do is just boost this up some. But we kind of can't because there isn't much we can do to this. I mean, I guess what we could do, the cheapest option, is if we went and got our good old Catapult 3S. And that's 8139 funds. Now, how much does the new one cost? Another 4 million funds for capability we don't need. Um, that's distressing. Um, one wonders. Uh, I wonder what would happen <laughs> if I just didn't have the second stage. Interesting. We have quite ridiculous burnout thrust. We cost two million more dollars than the old thing. But at least it's on the new engines. But I guess what we do is we just launch our old standby. Because uh, it's cheaper. Because why not? And... Meanwhile, I turn on auto shape and bulbous fairing is go. All right. Well, that's really kind of ridiculous that we're reduced to flying one of our original launch vehicles just because we don't have anything in the range we need. Um, but, you know, them's to the breaks. Uh, I'm also tempted to... Ooh, do I have... Hmm. No. No. We'll, we'll do it this way. Uh, and we'll, we'll capture on that. Instead of trying to have some kind of kickstage capture us. Um... So and this has this has much more reasonable end thrust weight ratio. Peaks out at four point eight G's. Second stage peaks at five point one six. Final stage peaks at three point four. Alright. Oh, and this has the old interesting that kind of arrangement of the three X. Uh so while we're here I need to I think I need to fix that subassembly. Might as well do it now. Um, because the launch clamps are in the wrong stage and also on the wrong side. This will prevent some issues on launch, I think you could say. Let's see, we want that. All right, and they both still have their pumps on. Yes and yes. Okay, uh, and let's put them on the right stage this time. Okay, now we'll go ahead and overwrite. Okay, and put this back on. Remove all the extra stages. Oops, wrong way. Plop, 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 plop. Plop. Okay, and move this down closer to the ground because we set it up for the other one. Okay. 
That's cool. So we'll get to fly our old standby launch vehicle one more time. Um, hopefully nothing fails. We have maximum data on it, but just all the engines are less reliable than their newer counterparts. Um, right. So let's see if either of these things is done before the 34 days that we're waiting for our fine-tuned maneuver. Uh, scan 1 is done in 5 days. Wow. Oh, and we do still have a, a geostationary thing queued up. So we can do that at some point. So our build rate is really quite impressive. The fact that those launch vehicles that used to take 40 plus days uh, is only going to take 5. And scan 2, which costs like 8.5 million dollars, only going to take 12 days. That's pretty impressive. Uh, we can also sync some of our hard-earned cash into raising our research rate slightly. So let's warp until this is done. And now if memory serves, I think we want a 480 by 480 something orbit at 89 point something degrees. God, I, I'm not an expert on ScanSat. We'll get close enough. We don't have to be perfect here. Also, the contract doesn't require 100% coverage. It just requires, like, I don't know, 90% coverage. And because we're only launching from the Cape, I'm going to ignore the range limits, uh, which means that either Cuba or the Eastern Seaboard may have something dropped on them. Um, in this case, I think Cuba. I think I want about 89 degrees. Um, and I think Mechjeb will underestimate, so I think we're going to go for minus 90. And we want 485. And now this is going to be interesting. What are the correct things to use for this? Uh, maybe those. So, let's fire it up. And off we go. Okay, and it's going to do like a 180 degree rotation. Hi, Cuba. Sorry about the stage. We're about to drop on you. Very, very white from the cloud layer. For reasons that fail to make any sense, Mechjeb is having problems. Really not sure why that's the case. I remember this from the last time we did a polar launch with this launch vehicle. Mechjeb seems to get a bit confused. Yeah, it's, well, no caster yet. I mean, I'm much happier dropping a stage on Batista's head. Yeah, that burnout thrust weight ratio is nuts.
nice thing is we're not going to care so much about inserting at zero vertical velocity because mostly we just care about our perigee being uh, our our apogee being correct at 485 or whatever. Ten seconds to burn out. Yeah, maybe I should have done turn shape 30. Even this is going to be too high. Burnout. Stage. Ignition. And we've just about reached level pitch. How is our inclination? Our inclination's doing okay. Two minutes to Apogee. Probably going to insert into like a 170, 175 kilometer perigee orbit with our Apogee up at 485 and then we'll circularize at Apogee. And I think we'll probably circularize with the uh, with the upper, with, with the probe. Oh, uh, right. Fairing jettison. Um, because we don't really need to bother with the stage. Yeah, I mean, the fact that I jettisoned that fairing rather late doesn't actually mean much, because we have like 2,000 kilometers, 2,000 meters per second extra on this thing. So, not really a concern. However, there's no reason that we can't go ahead and start scanning. Eighty nine degrees. All right, now let's bring it on back and stabilize about eighty nine. Uh, I think we need about eighty eight. Eighty seven. Eighty eight. That'll do. Not going to have a higher perigee. Than that. Well, we're going to insert it with positive vertical velocity, so our perigee might end up about where I projected it to be anyway. Um, Okay. Whoa, that was expensive on RCS. Let's not do that, shall we? Um, right, I forgot that I had skipped circularization. I better check it again. All right, so 88.9 meters per second to circularize. That's fine. Um, so we're going to go ahead and ditch well, we're going to kill our rotation first. 
Um, and now we're going to go ahead and ditch that thing. Um, and we're going to burn... Oops. Oops. Like this. Such that we get a negative... Ah, uh, there we are. Okay, so that will re-enter it. That's fine. Uh, now we'll light that. Um, and enable RCS. Come on. Was it on five? Okay, now RCS is enabled. That's fine. Um... Okay, so yes, let us go ahead and execute this node. And meanwhile, we can bring up our scan set window, which is somewhere around here. Uh, there we go. So we're working through the scan. Close the window. Light the engine. Wherein we circularize. Okay. Now, let's... Come on. There we are. We want the big map because we want to see our orbital elements. So it looks like they're actually evenly divided. So I guessed fairly correctly in terms of uh, the orbital trajectory that we'll, the, the orbital parameters that we we'll need for a good map of the Earth. Um, yeah, because you want these dots evenly spaced, is my understanding of ScanSat, because it shows it every time you cross the equator, ascending and descending. Um, and if they're bunched closely together, then you don't have decent coverage and you'll miss spots. As it is now, it looks like we'll actually have quite good coverage. So, yeah, that is good. So we'll just go ahead and let that go. Um, how are the down, what, blocked by Earth? Blocked by Earth. Well, that doesn't actually help. Um, yeah, this is not at all a sun synchronous orbit. Um, we could have waited to be aligned along the Terminator, but we actually have enough battery that we don't necessarily need to launch into a sun synchronous orbit. And this is a radar thingy anyway, so it doesn't actually matter that we're not getting a nice picture of Earth. Alright, so that all looks fine to me. Um, we're stabilized now. So let's head on back and sit back and let that contract complete. Robin 6 is 26, no, 29 days, 9 hours. So, scan two, we'll launch that towards the moon. Switch back to pad one, roll it out. Um, oh, right, we need to be building our Venus orbiters too. Um, I, well, we still have time. It's still a ways until Venus is probably still like 260 days. 284 days. Unless that's a six. I'm having trouble reading. I think it's 284. All right, so we've got plenty of time. That's fine. Um, 
So, now we'll target the moon. And now we put back our old numbers. And I'll manually cut it off, but just in case. And skip circ, launch into plane of target, engage autopilot. It is nearing the end of summer, which makes sense, so we'll have a dawn launch. Well, early morning launch, whatever. Um, yeah, it's roughly... Uh, yeah, this is, this is in the morning. Um, Up we go. Haven't launched this in a little while. In a little while. And we're once again going to head a little bit south first. Then we're going to straighten out. And hopefully, I don't have to rebuild one of, rebuy one of these. That would be annoying. Pitch program starts. Perspective on the previous episode's issues, it's worth pointing out that in real life, generally, uh, there is a margin. Uh, one thing that, because we actually get to see our Delta V very carefully, we get to design rockets to taste, all that stuff, we sometimes get encouraged to um, not build margin in, and I'm certainly very guilty that I, I take considerable pride in, like, actually getting every last little tiny bit of performance out of things, totally optimizing my ascent, all that stuff. Uh, downside is if you do have a failure, it's very hard to recover. Um, because in real life, if you launch, you know, a satellite on an Atlas V and there's an RD-180 failure on the first stage, well, the Centaur might have enough excess propellant that it can just burn longer um, because it doesn't actually need all of its margin. Um, and that happened somewhat recently. So, five seconds to first stage burnout. So, as a general rule, I probably need to get better about into the habit of not <laughs> doing that. And ignition. Now, that's an engine bell I haven't seen for a long, long time. Uh, up we go. Close enough to the Carmen line that we can stitch our fairings.
we doing on time? 50 seconds? Uh, I think we're gonna have to pitch up a little bit more, actually. <laughs> Not as badly as that uh, Atlas Centaur launch I was just referring to. Uh, I was pointed out to me by Blowfish that uh, they had to burn something like 55 degrees above prograde to keep it from falling back in the atmosphere just because of how low thrust uh, the Centaur 5 is. So, it's not quite as bad as, as Delta Cryogenic second stage on the Delta Force, but still. Uh, Centaur 5 single engine Centaur, which is all they've ever flown so far, even to low Earth orbit, that thing has an th initial thrust to weight ratio of something like 0.2. Um, got a very long burn time. I think it's on the order of 10, 12 minutes, um, if not longer. No, it must be longer than that, because um, dual engine Centaur would have a burn time of about eight, nine minutes on that thing. So it's probably, yeah, it's probably in the 16 minute range. Um, and yeah, it had to burn far, far above prograde because, um, so imagine if we were flying this stage right now with this speed, with this time to apogee, and if we had literally one tenth that thrust to weight ratio, imagine how high we'd have to pitch up. Okay, now we're gaining time to apogee, so we can pitch down again. And pitch down a bit more. wasn't paying attention. I guess we're off plane again. And zero our pitch. Burn out and engage our RCS. And oh, that that is I forgot that I hated this part. Um, and pitch down because evidently I did keep the up pitch too far. that decrease or increase? Oh, I should add land to that. Um, Alright, so that's increase. Okay, and that's pretty much alignment. And parking orbit. Alright, close enough. Now let's perform TLI. Almond transfer, create node. Um, okay. Now the advantage of this low performance annoying stage is that there's no boil off. Uh, and this is why I'm sort of vaguely sad that I didn't go the route of making an Agena stage, because it's actually quite high performance. It's not that much worse performing than the 11D33 that I was using, but it doesn't have any boil off at all. And also it has nice things like no LH and 15 relights and all sorts of fun things. Um, but I've done that so much on my US playthroughs that 
I wanted to I wanted this this playthrough to be a demonstration of, of mix and match of how you can um oops, are we in warp or something? Oh no, they did extend anyway. Alright, but let's get the solar panels out because we don't want to run out of electric charge. Um execute the next maneuver. Um I wanted this playthrough to be an example of how you can mix and match tech from the US and the Soviet Union and Europe and wherever uh, and get some really amazing performance out of it. Particularly if you're, if you're mixing US Hydrolox and Soviet stage combustion Carolox. Okay, so we're ologing. And I think this, yeah, this is now very stable. So, there we go. And I believe, yeah, let's go ahead and put the retros in the top stage so we don't fire the retros, so that we'll actually crash this stage into the moon. When we decouple. So far, so good. It's funny how much this stage actually looks like a Delta K stage. Um, it really is pretty funny. Uh, the Delta K stage was the last of the hypergolic Delta upper stages. It was flown on Delta II, and I presumably will still be flown on the last Delta II. Um, but it, yeah, it looks it looks somewhat like this, uh, just rather larger. It's eight feet in diameter, same diameter as the as the first stage. Way there in terms of delta V, so about two thirds of the burn done. Almost there. About 15 seconds left. Okay. Now let's see whether we're impacting the moon. Survey says we are. So let's go ahead and stage to cast off our... 
upper stage and oops uh move away from it a little bit and are we still yeah we're still on intercept so let's put a node um Yeah, we want to be, I think, about halfway. And we want to then focus on the moon. And we want to get a polar orbit. So. We want normal. Okay. And then back to one. Okay, that. That looks like it's pretty good inclination. As things go, fifty kilometers. Uh, I wish it would tell you what your inclination is. I think that's about 90. Well, it's about 88, really, but it should be fine. Um... Lower it down a little bit, and is that straighter? Maybe. Well, it's acceptable, <laughs> whatever it is. Um, and the sun has broken. Let's look at these things. They're getting full wattage. That's great. Um, so, let's go ahead and warp to the maneuver node. Okay, and let's orient towards the maneuver node. Yeah, we are passing it, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, and from map view, let's focus on the moon again. And proceed to... Um, I guess actually we can just go ahead and light off the engine. Um, So that will work. That inclination looks to be about 88 degrees, maybe 85. That's acceptable to me. And let's get it a little, let's shoot for maybe seventy kilometers. That will do. All right, so now we need to circularize. At the next periapsis. Ugh, except I think that, oh, that's the next. All right, so we need to warp into the moon's sphere of influence first. So let's do that. Okay, and look at that stage. That stage is gonna impact the moon so we don't have to worry about it anymore. Our inclination is 89.8. That is acceptable to me. Circularize at lunar periapsis, 793 meters per second. 
Um, okay. That's basically because we're not getting any kind of gravity assist from the moon. Um, and if we were doing a free return, it would probably be, might be even more. Might be up to 900. Uh, so let's go ahead and orient to the maneuver. And do the maneuver. have no comms, but MechJeb will handle maneuver, so it's okay. But we will have to wait until we have comms again in order to... Um... Oh look, our scan of Earth completed. That's cool. We'll have to wait till we have comms again to deploy that antenna, though, the the radar setup. Okay, we've got about a minute and a half left on capture burn. Okay, we've officially captured, although we we're trying to lower our lunar apoapsis. Could watch that come on down. We're still at 89.8 .8 degrees, which is acceptable to me. Um, and we'll still have plenty of delta V for corrections. We'll have about 400 meters per second for corrections. Because we, I don't remember the what's optimal for the moon, so I'm just guessing here. We know we want to be in low lunar orbit, certainly. But the question is, uh, exactly what inclination do we want, and exactly what parameters do we want, such that our, our transits of the lunar equator are evenly spaced. At least now we can look on the bright side of the moon. Um, I, I mean, I have been kind of sat satirized for mostly playing a spreadsheet. All right, so that maneuver is done. So now we just need to wait until we have connection again, which we do now. That's good. So, oh, and there's Earth. How oh, nice. Where is? There's our plucky little probe. Uh, start scan. All right, and we want the big map so we can check our equatorial crossings. And we want to change to the moon. Okay, and that's bad. They're all bunched together. So. What does that mean? Well, that means that we probably need to consider changing our inclination slightly. That's interesting. Where did our inclination markers go? Oh, we weren't in orbit mode, that's why. Yeah, we have 430 meters per second left, so let's go ahead and try changing this. See what difference that makes. Not much. All right, so I think we're going to have to change our period, which is what's not going to actually matter. All 
All right, so that's starting to spread them out some. Except that <laughs> that's now quite a large period. Um, so I'm now skeptical whether we'll that's even in the range, the required range. Um, let's come on. There we are. Let's see if we go in out of that range band. All right, where are, time to app apsis. All right, we're now at Apoapsis. So let's go ahead and move the big map back and burn to extend our period this way as well. Close enough. And we're almost All right, so there's still these these gaps, see? That's that's the problem. Oh, and we've extended our apogee too much. We need to st I think we need to stay under about 500 kilometers. So, we're going to have to mess with inclination then, I guess. Um so we'll do that burn at We have 140 meters per second. Okay. So we'll have to change our inclination at the highest. And let's try 85 degrees. How much is that going to cost? 69. Post maneuver, that's not actually much better, is it? But um, we can warp on up to Air Apogee, Equatorial DN. All right. Now we are at the DN, which means we need to burn normal. to leave just enough delta V that we can lower that thing back down under 500. All right, that doesn't actually seem to be sh shifting these much at all. So let's go ahead and yeah, this was kind of a mess. Um, The only thing we could have done differently, I guess, um, is up the inclination to full-on 90 degrees, and then just wait a while. Um, I think that's probably what I should have done rather than burning in this direction, but we're kind of screwed now. Uh, so let's go ahead and change apoapsis, that's periapsis, to uh, 490. How much is that going to cost? Whew! Okay, so let's do that maneuver. solar panels doing. 0.49. Not good enough. Alright, so we're going to have to Oops. 
Oops. All right, now the solar panels are doing much better. All right. Okay. Let's re-establish our alignment with the maneuver node. That is close enough. All right, we're one minute from the maneuver node. So we'll go ahead and align. And we want a reserve of just a little itty. Whoa, heading off course. Okay. All right, and let's bring it down. All right, this will have to do. Let's see if we can scan enough of the moon for it to matter. So, um, Let's go ahead and switch back to Whoops, no, we wanted that. Yes, we want scan one. Because now that we have a fairly complete scan of the earth Where are we? That's pleasantly complete. What does it what does it say actually? Uh well tell me the percent complete. Hundred percent. Excellent. Uh let's go ahead and, and analyze that data. And let me make sure that the science actually transmits because there are some bugs with that. Sixty science. It's gonna take a while to transmit. take a while to transmit. Um, yeah, so as I mentioned, ScanSat is not my forte along with Gravity Assists, so uh, I highly recommend it. Like, I know that some other players like Boston Specimen Spiff are better able to do that. Did that add? That did add. Great. We're up to 155 science. Uh, we, can lock, we almost have enough science to unlock an extra node. Um, So now we'll just go ahead and wait for that to scan enough of the moon for it to matter. Um, yeah, were it, in a, were it in a perfect 90 degree inclination, then I would think that after 14 days, i.e. it's rotated halfway, um, we'd get full coverage of the moon, but I was not on a full 90 degree inclination, so I don't know what we might miss. Uh, but it should be enough to complete the contract anyway. What does the contract specify? Contract specifies 75%. Uh, we'll easily pass 75% scanning the moon. Um, all right, so now that we've verified our scanning, it's time to improve stage combustion. 21 days. Miniaturization, 186 days? Hmm. That would leave 100 days to construct our Venus probes, which I think is acceptable given our high build rate now. So I think it's worth waiting for the Ranger Block 6. 
So instead we, is there maybe a geostationary launch we could do? Tundra orbit. No, I don't want a tundra orbit, I want a geostationary launch. That's super synchronous. That's not even at Earth. That's geostationary network. Film return camera on the satellite. Well, we, we're not going to do that. All right, this one we probably can do. Perturbation biological sample. I think that's what we have. And let's look at what location that is. Hopefully something useful. Nope. <laughs> oh, it's named after me. That's cool. <laughs> I forgot that that I'm in that name generator list. That's awesome. I kind of want to wa want to launch the satellite now just because of that. Um, do we have a satellite directly over it though? Uh, I kind of feel like we do. <laughs> yes, we have. Well, we can we can shift Sky Star two around. I guess we could put Sky Star one right there. So yeah, I'm now tempted to do that. Um, oh, Sky Star two is I think that that low bug thing. Let's let's check it out and see if it's still low bugged. Uh, yep, it's low bugged. Uh, wow. Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> it's, it's fairly well bugged, gotta say. It also literally has no propellant remaining, so we can't shift its orbit. That's really quite tragic. Um, I guess what we could do is, is launch this thing into this place and then shift its orbit later. Um, there's no particular reason not to do that. Geostationary orbit. Also, I don't have... Well, oh, I guess I have a scar, but not really a relevant one. Um, so, yes. Just because of the name, I kind of can't avoid doing that. So, biosample and orbital perturbation. So, let's go ahead and edit this. It's on the new launch vehicle, isn't it? I think it is. No, it's on the old launch vehicle. Intriguing. Um, what kind of Delta V do we are we talking about here? Um, So, we need to put an orbital perturbation sensor on here. And fairly sure that's locked. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, oh, but I think the tech level might be... No, it's already tech level 2. Um, orbital perturbation. So, one of you... Oh, no, it already has... What does it have centered there? Uh, let's find out. Action groups... Orbital... Oh, excellent! That's great. Okay, it's already 
it's already ready for ready for use. Uh, the only change I would make is to switch to the new... Well, no. No, we'll stay with the old solar panel because it's already built. Um, which means I don't actually have to rebuild it any. So let's see what kind of Delta V we're talking about on this thing. Um, 298, then dry it is 155. And the specific impulse of relevance is 280.84. So 298 over 155. Natural log times whoops two ninety eight over one fifty five. Take the natural log times G zero times two eighty point eight four is eighteen hundred meters per second. That is gonna be plenty of delta V to place it and then move it. Excellent. So we're gonna go ahead and plop this back. Let's just verify that all works. Now we're going to subtract. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Don't want to do that. All right, now we're back to 1226. Okay, so we put this back on. And what delta V are we talking about here? 3502 plus 5079 plus 3704 minus 2450 is 9834. All right, so we have like 500 meters per second spare, uh, which means that, right, we can we can do some of our inclination change at the perigee kick. Um, so that should be good. Uh, so we'll cancel our edits because it's already exactly what we want, literally exactly what we want. And let's let's roll it out and fly it. Okay, and sundown launch. Now, last time we demonstrated that um, I pitched up too far, so this time we're throwing rather more, but it's still uh, it's 300 plus whatever the Altair is, which is like 250 kilograms, so... Um, we shall see. But I won't be quite so aggressive with my pitch-ups. Uh, so we're going to engage autopilot. We're going to light the engines. And away we go. And the higher we get, the brighter it gets.
Definitely got a big ball of fire behind us now. That's for sure. 30 seconds to main engine cutout. light on the second stage. Let's pitch up some, but not too much. actually going to want a higher parking orbit. So I'm going to pitch up somewhat more severely now and then pitch down later. So we're coming up on altitude for fairing step. Bye-bye fairings. And now let's go ahead and pitch down. Well, we still only got... Yeah. I want to... I don't want that low a perigee. I mean, we are throwing more than that last launch, so... We will have to aim higher, I guess. Almost out of the atmosphere. Well, good I didn't aim lower than this, because um, we're definitely having trouble clawing our apogee as high as I want it to be. Okay, and we've hit down to zero pascals of dynamic pressure. And as I usually mention during these launches, it's worth noting that we're building up some steering losses, but it made much more sense for us to pitch down on the first stage to limit our gravity losses, and now pitch up above prograde on the second stage, now that they don't matter so much. up on one I'll want to pitch down, which I think is going to be right about now. Hmm. Pitch up a little bit more. Let's check orbit mode. Uh, Let's come left a little. We have the delta V. We can reduce our inclination now. Yeah, we're going to have about a minute's worth, at least, 
minute and a half maybe on the next stage so we'll let the time to apogee rise a little bit but not let it get away from us We still want to be a little bit. There we are. Light the next stage. And take the gimbal down. So we're still steering a little bit left of 90 degrees because we want to align orbit with it as much as possible because we're lowering our inclination. And we'll see if I guessed right in terms of pitch. come left a little bit more. I guess I was pitched up a little bit much. So we'll pitch down a little. That is acceptable to me. Now, let's go ahead and set up our change apogee at the equatorial DN. We want about 30,000, and then we want to add a bunch of normal. 3099, whole bunch of normal. Let's see what kind of apogee that is giving us. Not enough. All right. Okay, that is acceptable, and that will reduce our inclination quite a bit. So, let's go ahead and orient for perigee kick. Not sure why we're picking up some roll just from yawing left, but them's to breaks on this stage. going to be a 3 minute and 33 second burn, or thereabouts. Very stable, and ignition. Not sure why Mechjeb is chasing it so much. Okay, now we're locked on. All right. Now we'll sit back and let Meg Jeb complete the burn.
and hopefully we don't overburn by much. So we're definitely expending more delta-v than would normally be required to get into geostationary orbit. However, um, it all comes out okay because um, it's basically free delta-v. It's excess capacity in this stage that we couldn't use up at Apogee anyway. All right, now let's look at antennas. Now, I trust that I do have some small antennas, maybe? And if I did, two would extend them, so I hit two. So we'll see whether that's the case. How deeply on the night side are we? Um, all right, it's going to be a while before we reach the day side. Got about 45 seconds left to burn. And we'll see how close we get to our desired apogee. Okay, so now we have burnout. Let's abort the node execution. Um, warp until we have connectivity again, I guess. Which we do now. That's good. So we need to go ahead and burn RCS until we've got our desired Apogee. Which is 35786. Okay. Now, we get to go ahead and perf and set up our circularization node. Um, so, we want to change periapsis at the next apoapsis, 35786. Create the node. Now, we want... Then to change inclination, 
at the AN. And that's minus 123 is 1358 total. So let's go ahead and remove all nodes. Go back to change periapsis. So 1358 prograde. Nothing radial and minus 861. 1608. So we'll need f just under 400 meters per second on the um, satellite itself. And I'm really going to hope that our alignment is such that we will get sun in our required orientation. Um, okay, so let's align with this. Okay, and now we need to spin up. and decouple. Okay, and we need to... Oops, wrong way. Right way. Rename. Debris. Okay, swap back to our happy twirling probe core. Um, let's go ahead and warp on until we get sunlight, which should be about here. Please tell me we're aligned. Well, that's a shame. <laughs> we get next to no sunlight. Also, we don't seem to have any antennas other than the com dish. And that's really kind of a problem. because our rate of electric charge usage is going to be rather bad. Um, because this drains 50 watts, let's compute this. We have about 1080 electrical charge. We get consistently about 18 watts, it looks like, this way. Um, so, 50 minus 18 plus 0.7.8 is 30, call it 33 watts draw. 1080 over 0.033 is 32,727. Yeah, um, that's... That's nine hours. We have an orbital period of ten hours. So we're going to have to w wait to enable this thing. Um, so let's go ahead and enable it right now. Target Earth. And we're going to use the flight computer to do it later. Um, okay, so we need a delay of time. Oh, time to apoapsis is five hours. So five hours, activate. Okay, let's see if this works and let's see where we are 
if we warp to node um, where whether we're anywhere near our target Australia, aren't we? So that doesn't do anybody any good. So we'll advance that to the next orbit. Yeah, we're we're nowhere near where we're supposed to be. All right. So the maneuver is in 10 hours 32 minutes. So, ten hours and thirty one minutes. Ugh, we can't. Oh, I can't do it now, can I? No, I have to do it. I have to do it when we're back in normal comms range. Okay, that's fine. I don't care. Oops, sorry about the twirling for a second there. That seems to be an existing KSP bug. Um, okay, so now that's in five hours, 28 minutes. Whoa, that's weird. Even when a different GUI element has focus, it does it? Five hours, 27 minutes. And then we want to go ahead and activate this dish. Okay, reset the delay, and let's go ahead and warp to the maneuver. Okay, that's not that wrong an alignment so let's wait for the dish to activate bingo we have comms let's go ahead and handle our insertion and we can fine-tune our position later So, let's go ahead and fire it up. And we need to unlock those, unlock those. And we're going to want a slightly higher... Whoop! Coming out of alignment a little bit, it looks like. Pop. And... Kill the rotation.
Whoops, come on, get back lined up. Okay, that will do. Yeah, okay, so this is a shockingly long burn time. <laughs> um. Okay, we're going to tilt up a little bit to staunch the bleeding in terms of our current altitude. And we want 35786 or so as an apogee. We're not lacking for delta V, we're just lacking for thrust. Okay, that seems to be about the minimum inclination we can get at this point, which is fine. And we mostly just want a supersynchronous orbit because we want... Well, let's go ahead and... Actually... Yeah, we're probably not. Okay, so the orbit's fine, but we're just not keeping line of sight. Okay, so we do need to go to a supersynchronous orbit. And then... let the Earth rotate forward under us, essentially. Alright. Now we just need to go ahead and actually line up with the Sun. So we want locked, and we want to come right. All right, now we, we're getting enough off the solar panels that we can support that dish, even though the dish is pointing directly opposite from Earth, but so what. Um, so, let's go ahead and let that thing slowly catch up to us. Um, and let's create a change inclination thing anyway at the equatorial DN. All right.
How lined up are we? Nope, we're still not lined up yet. Still not lined up. Still not lined up. All right, let's warp to the end. Okay, now we're fairly close to being lined up, but not quite lined up yet. Uh, so I need to burn... Um, to reduce our inclination. Whoops, and I guess I'll just actually have to head up towards it. Close enough. That is an acceptable inclination. Now we'll just go ahead and let this catch up with us ever so slowly. Uh, how are we doing up here? That's at 38. All right. Yeah, let's just see what we're like at a little before periapsis then. Yeah, that's better. And now we just have to correct our orbit. Okay, that's fine. Um, time to periapsis. Okay, getting close to periapsis. Okay, now let's go ahead and align with periapsis. Okay, almost there. 35. Hmm. Orbital period is a little low. I guess I'm a... I guess I wasn't... It's 56... 4, isn't it? Okay, that will do. Completed the contract. Now we just need to go ahead and um It's not a very useful satellite here, 
because Skystar 2 is right there. So we're actually going to want to, now that we've just done that, raise it right back up. Okay, that did not move us very far back. Whoa! Apparently we're not facing the sun correctly here. Whoa, we're really not. All right. Let's see if this is better. Yes. Now we're now we're sun aligned again. All right. So let's head back to periapsis. That was a close run thing. All right, now let's see how we're... Okay. So still 12 days until Robin, so we can do this for a while. This is how you adjust your geostationary constellation, is you just <laughs> do this a lot, basically. Okay, now we're getting some significant spacing. Still nowhere near enough, but... Uh, we want to change apoapsis at the next periapsis. 35790, create node. Oh, whoops. Uh, that's an periapsis. All right, and we want to advance this a couple orbits and see how far we how that goes. Okay, we still need to space this out a bit more, so we'll warp to the next maneuver. Okay. Now how are we doing on spacing? That's pretty good, I think. We obviously still need a geostationary satellite over here, but I think this will prove acceptable. Oops. 
and let's align back with the sun again. How are we looking? Nope, still need to... Still need to align a bit better. Whoops, no, wrong way. That's about right. Nope, still not quite. Alright, now we're fully aligned with the sun. And we have our geostationary period. Okay, so that was a success. Um, so the final thing I want to do is hop over to Robin 6 and do its fine tune. Where are we? Where's Robin 6? That's Wisp 1. I'm going to presume it's... There's Robin 6. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, warp to its maneuver. We can get rid of that now. Okay, and remove that and do a fine tune again just to be sure we have the right. No, I think we wanted 140 or something. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Alright. Let's head towards it. Okay, and let's focus in on Mars and see how the fine tune goes. back aligned. Well, that's interesting. Apparently it's going to be in a rather higher inclination than I was planning it to be. Okay, that is acceptable. Now, let us look at our solar panels. How are they doing? Not so good, probably. No, not so good. Okay, so we have to... We're going to have to rotate. Great. Alright, 
let's wait until we have our solar panels better aligned. Which is, I think, going to be... about here. Yep. Okay. One more verification. Our Mars periapsis is good. So, SOI transition. Oops. Mars. Okay. So, yeah. Um, how is that going to be for comms, though? Our SOI change is here. It's in 118 days. That means the Earth is going to be a third away. So right there. So, um, huh. Now that we aren't even going to try to capture Um, to ensure constant signal, I think I'm going to do a burn such that we're on the near side of Mars. Because it's on that side of it, which is on that side of it, which eh, six to one half dozen the other. Earth's orbit is such that it will be there. I think actually, well, all right, so we're going to change this to have quite a margin, such that we can do a correction burn if we have to, if we're going to end up on the wrong side of it. Uh, what is 144 hours anyway? That's six days. All right, that's fine. We've got plenty of delta V, because we're not going to try to capture. All right, so that's all lined up. So I guess in the next episode we can worry about um, Venus. Let's check the status of our where scan. Okay. We want the moon. <laughs> yep, we're just missing that chunk of it. Um, oh, we completed the moon contract. I didn't even notice, I guess. Archives. Where was the scan contract? We completed it. All right, which means we can get the science from it. And then we can pick what to spend it on. some money from that too. All right, let's analyze the data. And how's our science right now? Uh, that's weird. Well, it was 156. We'll see if it correctly updates. 82 science. Yep. Okay.
Okay, so we can actually afford to get one more node. So let's look at the long list of nodes we already bought. Improved stage combustion, miniature stage landing, second gen capsules, early hydrolocks, mature capsules, heavy orbital rocketry, mature solids, advanced construction, hydrolox engines, advanced flight control, short term habitation. All right. So I think that means the next thing we get is improved electrics. That will give us that much better antenna that lets us do Mars uh, opposition missions, because right now we don't have an antenna that will reach that far. And further, it uh, gives us some good, our first like serious business solar panels, um, large enough to power like a three-person uh, pod kind of thing, if you have enough of them. So let us go ahead and also buy some upgrades. We really only need about 100,000 funds hanging around. And we can stick all that in R&D. So note it is September 21st, 1958. We have 182 KCT upgrades. Our science is at 0.618 per day. Our VAB is at 3.65 each. Uh, that's actually probably a bit much, but it's fine. We probably should have invested a bit more in research and a bit less than that, but that's okay. Uh, four days to improve stage combustion. So that sets us up quite well for the next episode where we will deal with uh, our arrival at Mars, um, prototyping a new really heavy launch vehicle, which is going to cost a lot to get up to the level of reliability that we want for it, but we really kind of don't have a choice. We're just going to have to spend that development cost. Um, then building uh, our Venus orbiters, and then we can start to think about um, perhaps landing something on the moon, which should also come due before too long. Uh, so with that, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope that you uh, learned something that was helpful to you, uh, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks, and bye-bye. Jeb is chasing it so much. Okay, now we're locked on. Alright, now we'll sit back and let Meg Jeb complete the burn. And hopefully we don't overburn by much. So we're definitely expending more delta V than would normally be required to get into geostationary orbit. However, um, it all comes out okay because um, it's basically free delta V. It's excess capacity in this stage that we couldn't use up at Apogee anyway. All right, now let's look at antennas. Now, I trust that I do have some small antennas, maybe? And if I did, two would extend them, so I hit two. So we'll see whether that's the case. How deeply on the night side are we? Um, all right, it's going to be a while before we reach the day side.
Okay, we've got about 45 seconds left to burn. Did two would extend them, so I hit two. So we'll see whether that's the case. How deeply on the night side are we? Um, all right, it's going to be a while before we reach the day side. We've got about 45 seconds left to burn. And we'll see how close we get to our desired apogee. Okay, so now we have burnout. Let's abort the node execution. Um, warp until we have connectivity again, I guess. Which we do now. That's good. So we need to go ahead and burn RCS until we've got our desired apogee. Which is 35.786. Okay. Now, we get to go ahead and, perf and set up our circularization node. Um, let's abort the node execution. Um, warp until we have connectivity again, I guess. Which we do now. That's good. So we need to go ahead and burn RCS until we've got our desired apogee. Which is 35786. Okay, now we get to go ahead and, perf and set up our circularization node. Um, so we want to change periapsis at the next apoapsis, 35786. Create the node. Now we want Then to change inclination at the AN, and that's minus 123, is 1358 total. So let's go ahead and remove all nodes, go back to change periapsis.
So, 1358 prograde. Nothing radial. And minus 861. 1608. So we'll need f just under 400 meters per second on the um, satellite itself. And I'm really going to hope that our alignment is such that we will get sun in our required orientation. Um, okay, so let's align with this. Okay, and now we need to spin up, but it should be fine. Um, lower it down a little bit, and is that straighter? Maybe. Well, it's acceptable, whatever it is. Um, and the sun has broken. Let's look at these things. They're getting full wattage. That's great. Um, so, let's go ahead and warp to the maneuver node. Okay, and let's orient towards the maneuver node. Yeah, we are passing it, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, and from map view, let's focus on the moon again. And proceed to... Um, I guess actually we can just go ahead and light off the engine. Um, So that will work. That inclination looks to be about 88 degrees, maybe 85. That's acceptable to me. And let's get it a little, let's shoot for maybe seventy kilometers. That will do. All right, so now we need to circularize. At the next periapsis. Ugh, except I think that, oh, that's the next. All right, so we need to warp into the moon's sphere of influence first. So let's do that. That is close enough. All right, we're one minute from the maneuver node. So we'll go ahead and align. And we want a reserve of just a little itty, whoa, heading off course.
Okay. Alright, and let's bring it down. Alright, this will have to do. Let's see if we can scan enough of the moon for it to matter. So, um, let's go ahead and switch back to whoops no we wanted that yes we want scan one because now that we have a fairly complete scan of the earth where are we that's pleasantly complete what does it what does it say actually uh, will it tell me the percent complete hundred percent excellent uh, let's go ahead and, and analyze that data and let me make sure that the science actually transmits because there are some bugs with that 60 science this is going to take a while to transmit Take a while to transmit. Um, yeah, so as I mentioned, ScanSat is not my forte along with Gravity Assists, so uh, I highly recommend. Like, I know that some other players like Boston Specimen Spiff are better able to do that. Do that at? Do we? What are we talking about here? Um. So we need to put an orbital perturbation sensor on here. And fairly sure that's locked. Yes, it is. OK. Um, oh, but I think the tech level might be. No, it's already tech level 2. Um, orbital perturbation. So one of you, oh, no, it already has, what does it have centered there? Uh, let's find out. Action groups, orbital, per oh, excellent. That's great. Okay, it's already, it's already ready for, ready for use. Uh, the only change I would make is to switch to the new, well, no. No, we'll stay with the old solar panel because it's already built, um, which means I don't actually have to rebuild it any. So let's see what kind of delta v we're talking about on this thing. Um, 298, then dry it is 155. And the specific impulse of relevance is 280.84. So. 298 over 155 natural log times whoops 298 over 155 take the natural log times g0 times 280.84 is 1800 meters per second that is going to be plenty of delta v to place it and then move it excellent so we're going to go ahead and plop this back. Let's just verify that all works. Now we're going to subtract. Oh, whoops. Don't want to do that. All right, now we're back to 1226. Okay, so we put this back on. And what delta V are we talking about here? 3502 plus 5079 plus 3704 minus 2450 is 9835. All right, so we have like 500 meters per second spare. 
uh, which means that right, we can we can do some of our inclination change. There we are. Let's see if we go in out of that range band. All right, where time to app apsis. All right, we're now at apoapsis. So let's go ahead and move the big map back and burn to extend our period this way as well. Close enough. And we're almost All right, so there's still these these gaps. See, that's that's the problem. Oh, and we've extended our apogee too much. We need to. I think we need to stay under about 500 kilometers. So we're going to have to mess with inclination then, I guess. Um, so we'll do that burn at. We have 140 meters per second. Okay. So we'll have to change our inclination at the highest. And let's try 85 degrees. How much is that going to cost? 69. Post maneuver, that's not actually much better, is it? But um, we can warp on up to Air apogee, equatorial DN. All right. Now we are at the DN, which means we need to burn normal. to leave just enough delta V that we can lower that thing back down under 500. All right, that doesn't actually seem to be sh shifting these much at all. Usage is going to be rather bad. Um, because this drains 50 watts, let's compute this. We have about 1080 electrical charge. We get consistently about 18 watts, it looks like, this way. Um, so 50 minus 18 plus 0.7.8 point is 30, call it 33 watts draw. 1080 over 0 0.033 is 32,727. Yeah, um, that's that's nine hours. We have an orbital period of 10 hours, so we're going to have to w wait to enable this thing. Um, so, let's go ahead and enable it right now. Target Earth. And we're going to use the flight computer to do it later. Um, Okay, so we need a delay of time. Oh, time to apoapsis is five hours. So five hours, activate. Oh, 
Okay. Let's see if this works and let's see where we are. If we warp to node. Um, where, whether we're anywhere near our target. Go ahead and actually Yeah, we're probably not Okay, so the orbit's fine, but we're just not keeping line of sight. Okay, so we do need to go to a supersynchronous orbit. And then let the Earth rotate forward under us, essentially. All right. Now we just need to go ahead and actually line up with the sun. So we want locked, and we want to come right. Okay. All right, now we, we're getting enough off the solar panels that we can support that dish even though the dish is pointing directly opposite from Earth, but so what. Um, so, let's go ahead and let that thing slowly catch up to us. Um, and let's create a change inclination thing anyway at the Equatorial DN. All right. How lined up are we? Nope, we're still not lined up yet. Still not lined up. Still not lined up. All right, let's warp to the end. Okay, now we're fairly close to being lined up, but not quite lined up yet. Uh, so I need to burn. I forgot that that I'm in that name generator list. That's awesome. I kind of want to want want to launch the satellite now just because of that. Um, do we have a satellite directly over it, though? Uh, I kind of feel like we do. <laughs> yes, we have. Well, we can we can shift SkyStar two around. I guess we could put SkyStar one right there. So yeah, I'm now tempted to do that. Um, oh, SkyStar two is I think that that low bug thing. Let's let's check it out and see if it's still low bugged. Uh, yep, it's low bugged.
Uh, wow. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's it's fairly well bugged. Gotta say. It also literally has no propellant remaining, so we can't shift its orbit. That's really quite tragic. Um, I guess what we could do is, is launch this thing into this place and then shift its orbit later. Um, there's no particular reason not to do that. Geostationary orbit. Also, I don't have... Well, oh, I guess I have a scar, but not really a relevant one. Um, so yes, just because of the name, I kind of can't avoid doing that. So, biosample and orbital perturbation. So, let's go ahead and edit this. It's on the new launch vehicle, isn't it? I think it is. No, it's on the old launch vehicle. Intriguing. Um, what kind of Delta V do we are we talking about here? Um, Okay, that's not that wrong, an alignment. Let's wait for the dish to activate. Bingo. We have comms. Let's go ahead and handle our insertion, and we can fine-tune our position later. So, let's go ahead and fire it up. And we need to unlock those, unlock those, And we're going to want a slightly higher... Whoop! Coming out of alignment a little bit, it looks like. Pop. And... Kill the rotation. Oops, come on, get back lined up. Okay, that will do. Yeah, okay, so this is a shocking long burn time. <laughs> um. Okay, we're going to tilt up a little bit to staunch the bleeding in terms of... Stage. 
ignition. We have a good light on the second stage. Let's pitch up some, but not too much. We're actually going to want a higher parking orbit, so I'm going to pitch up somewhat more severely now, and then pitch down later. So we're coming up on altitude for fairing step. Bye bye fairings. And now let's go ahead and pitch. Down. Well, we're still only got. Yeah. I want to. I don't want that low a perigee. I mean, we are throwing more than that last launch, so. We will have to aim higher, I guess. Almost out of the atmosphere. Well, good I didn't aim lower than this, because um, we're definitely having trouble clawing our apogee as high as I want it to be. Okay, and we've hit down to zero pascals of dynamic pressure. Yeah, let's just see what we're like at a little before periapsis then. Yeah, that's better. And now we just have to correct our orbit. Okay, that's fine. Um, time to periapsis. Okay. Getting close to periapsis. Okay, now let's go ahead and align with periapsis. Okay, almost there. 35. Hmm. Orbital period is a little low. I guess I'm a... I guess I wasn't... It's 56... 4, isn't it? Okay, that will do. Completed the contract. Now we just need to go ahead and... Um, 
<laughs> it's not a very useful satellite here because Skystar 2 is right there. So we're actually going to want to, now that we've just done that, raise it right back up. It's funny how much this stage actually looks like a Delta K stage. Um, it really is pretty funny. Uh, the Delta K stage was the last of the hypergolic Delta upper stages. It was flown on Delta II, and I presumably will still be flown on the last Delta II. Um, but it, yeah, it looks it looks somewhat like this, uh, just rather larger. It's eight feet in diameter, same diameter as the as the first stage. Halfway there in terms of delta V, so about two thirds of the burn done. there. About 15 seconds left. Okay. Now let's see whether we're impacting the moon. Survey says we are. So let's go ahead and stage to cast off our upper stage and oops uh, move away from it a little bit. And are we still? Yeah, we're still on an intercept. So let's put a node. Um, yeah, we. Perspective on the previous episode's issues, it's worth pointing out that in real life, generally, uh, there is a margin. Uh, one thing that, because we actually get to see our Delta V very carefully, we get to design rockets to taste all that stuff, we sometimes get encouraged to um, not build margin in, and I'm certainly very guilty of that I, I take considerable pride in, like, actually getting every last little tiny bit of performance out of things, totally optimizing my ascent, all that stuff. Uh, downside is if you do have a failure, it's very hard to recover. Um, because in real life, if you launch, you know, a satellite on an Atlas V and there's an RD-180 failure on the first stage, 
Well, the Centaur might have enough excess propellant that it can just burn longer um, because it doesn't actually need all of its margin. Um, and that happened somewhat recently. So, five seconds to first stage burnout. So, as a general rule, I probably need to get better about into the habit of not <laughs> doing that. And ignition. Now, that's an engine bell I haven't seen for a long, long time. Uh, up we go. Close enough to the Carmen line that we can stitch our fairings. Let's pitch up some, but not too much. We're actually going to want a higher parking orbit, so I'm going to pitch up somewhat more severely now, and then pitch down later. So we're coming up on altitude for fairing step. Bye bye fairings. And now let's go ahead and pitch. Down. Well, we're still only got. Yeah. I want to. I don't want that low a perigee. I mean, we are throwing more than that last launch, so. We will have to aim higher, I guess. Almost out of the atmosphere. Good I didn't aim lower than this, because um, we're definitely having trouble clawing our apogee as high as I want it to be. Okay, and we've hit down to zero pascals of dynamic pressure. And as I usually mention during these launches, it's worth noting that we're building up some steering losses, but it made much more sense for us to pitch down on the first stage to limit our gravity losses, and now pitch up above prograde on the second stage now that they don't matter so much. We have 140 meters per second. Okay. So we'll have to change our inclination at the highest. And let's try 85 degrees. How much is that going to cost? 69. Post maneuver, 
that's not actually much better, is it? But um, we can warp on up to air apogee, equatorial DN. All right. Now, we are at the DN, which means we need to burn normal. Okay. Okay. And we need to leave just enough delta V that we can lower that thing back down under 500. All right, that doesn't actually seem to be sh shifting these much at all. So let's go ahead and yeah, this was kind of a mess. Um, The only thing we could have done differently, I guess, um, is up the inclination to full-on 90 degrees, and then just wait a while. Um, I think that's probably what I should have done rather than burning in this direction, but we're kind of screwed now. Uh, so let's go ahead and change apoapsis, that's periapsis, to uh, 490. How much is that going to cost? Whew! Okay, so let's do that maneuver. Um, satellite itself. And I'm really going to hope that our alignment is such that we will get sun in our required orientation. Um, okay, so let's align with this. And now we need to spin up. And decouple. Okay, and we need to... Oops, wrong way. Right way. Rename. Debris. Okay, swap back to our happy twirling probe core. Um, let's go ahead and warp on until we get sunlight, which should be about here. Please tell me we're aligned. Well, that's a shame. <laughs> we get next to no sunlight. Also, we don't seem to have any antennas other than the com dish. And that's really kind of a problem. Because our rate of electric charge usage is going to be rather bad. Um, because this drains 50 watts, let's compute this. We have about 1080 electrical charge. We get consistently about 
18 watts, it looks like, this way. Um, so, 50 minus 18 plus 0 0.7, 0 0.8 is 30, call it 33 watts draw. 1080 over 0 0.033 is 32,727. Yeah, um, that's that's nine hours. That's even in the range, the required range. Um, let's come on. There we are. Let's see if we go in out of that range band. All right, where are, time to app, apsis. All right, we're now at apoapsis. So let's go ahead and move the big map back and burn to extend our period this way as well. Close enough. And we're almost all right, so there's still these these gaps, see that's that's the problem oh, and we've extended our apogee too much. We need to I think we need to stay under about five hundred kilometers, so we're gonna have to mess with inclination then, I guess um. So we'll do that burn at, we have 140 meters per second. OK. So we'll have to change our inclination at the highest. And let's try 85 degrees. How much is that going to cost? 69. Post maneuver, that's not actually much better, is it? But um, we can warp on up to air apogee, equatorial DN. All right. Now we are at the DN, which means we need to burn. normal. Okay. Okay. And we need to leave just enough delta V that we can lower that thing back down under. Proceed to, um, I guess actually we can just go ahead and light off the engine. Um, So that will work. That inclination looks to be about 88 degrees, maybe 85. That's acceptable to me. And let's get it a little, let's shoot for maybe 70 kilometers. That will do. All right. So now we need to circularize. At the next periapsis. Ugh, except I think that oh, that's the next. All right, so we need to warp into the moon sphere of influence first. So let's do that.
Okay, and look at that stage. That stage is going to impact the moon, so we don't have to worry about it anymore. Our inclination is 89.8. .8. That is acceptable to me. Circularize at lunar periapsis, 793 meters per second. Um, okay. That's basically because we're not getting any kind of gravity assist from the moon. Um, and if we were doing a free return, it would probably be might be even more. Might be up to 900. Uh, so let's go ahead and orient to the maneuver and do the maneuver. And we have no comms, but MacJeb will handle maneuver, so it's okay. But we will have to wait until we have comms again in order to. Um, okay, and then back to one. Okay, that. That looks like it's pretty good inclination. As things go, 50 kilometers. Uh, I wish it would tell you what your inclination is. I think that's about 90. Well, it's about 88, really, but it should be fine. Um, lower it down a little bit, and is that straighter? Maybe. Well, it's acceptable, <laughs> whatever it is. Um, and the sun has broken. Let's look at these things. They're getting full wattage. That's great. Um, so, let's go ahead and warp to the maneuver node. Let's orient towards the maneuver node. And yeah, we are passing it, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, and from map view, let's focus on the moon again and proceed to, um, I guess actually we can just go ahead and light off the engine. Um, So that will work. In the last episode, uh, <laughs> well, things didn't quite go to plan. Uh, we managed to put Robin 5 into orbit, but uh, the uh, 11D33 engine on our our Transmarge ejection stage failed halfway through the burn. 
So Robin 5 is now in a tundra orbit around the Earth. Uh, it's acting as basically yet another comm station. Robin 6, we did succeed in getting on its way, although we had every single engine in the first stage fail. Uh, first, one of the, the center engine failed. Thank goodness it was the center engine for thrust balancing. Uh, then one of the side engines had a performance loss, and then it failed, and then the last engine failed because they were burning over the rated burn time. Um, I had to pitch up a lot because we had lower thrust. Um, second stage was fine. We got that into barely into orbit, but it meant that we had to burn oh about 300 meters per second off the probe's propellant to get us on our Trans-Mars trajectory. Uh, that was also due to Mechjeb seeming to give me the wrong node information. Uh, so we burned extra, then we burned reverse again to get an encounter. Uh, and then lastly, uh, to top everything off, I looked in map view exactly how much it would cost to capture at Mars, just the absolute, absolute minimum, given the lowest possible uh, Mars periapsis. And it was about 45 meters per second more than the delta V of the probe if I hadn't burned anything. So I also underestimated just how much it would take to capture there, which meant that even had things gone perfectly, I probably couldn't have captured, um, unless I did some, some other hijinks, just because of how off-optimal this transfer was. Uh, but we are going to complete our Mars contract, assuming that nothing else goes wrong, because we are going to complete this Mars flyby. Uh, we have a fine-tuning maneuver in 34 days, uh, where we will lower our existing Mars flyby altitude to something much more reasonable. I added some alarms for further uh, Mars transfers. This conjunction, conjunctive transfer, that's going to have a crap ton of excess velocity, and that was really only good for a flyby. This opposition one is probably going to have a maybe 2200 meters per second capture requirement, after which we can aero break down to um, something more reasonable, and then finally raise the periapsis up to circular. Um, really, though, we're not going to get a good number, I think, for a while yet. Uh, closer and more relevant, we do have a Venus window coming up, which is quite cheap. Um, it's funny how much this stage actually looks like a Delta K stage. Um, it really is pretty funny. Uh, the Delta K stage was the last of the hypergolic Delta upper stages. It was flown on Delta II, and I presumably will still be flown on the last Delta II. Um, but it, yeah, it looks it looks somewhat like this, uh, just rather larger. It's eight feet in diameter, same diameter as the as the first stage. Halfway there in terms of delta V, so about two thirds of the burn done. Almost there. About 15 seconds left. Okay. Now let's see whether we're impacting the moon. Survey says we are. 
So let's go ahead and stage to cast off our upper stage and oops uh, move away from it a little bit. And are we still? Yeah, we're still on intercept. So let's put a node. Um, so I guess in the next episode we can worry about um, Venus. Let's check the status of our where's skin okay we want the moon <laughs> yep we're just missing that chunk of it um oh we completed the moon contract that I didn't even notice, I guess. Archives. Where was the scan contract? We completed it. Alright, which means we can get the science from it. And then we can pick what to spend it on. Some money from that too. All right, let's analyze the data. And how's our science right now? Uh, that's weird. Well, it was 156. We'll see if it correctly updates. 82 science. Yep. Okay. Okay, so we can actually afford to get one more node. So let's look at the long list of nodes we already bought. Improved stage combustion. Miniature. Where are we? That's pleasantly complete. What does it? What does it say actually? Uh, will it tell me the percent complete? Hundred percent. Excellent. Uh, let's go ahead and and analyze that data. And let me make sure that the science actually transmits because there are some bugs with that. 60 science. It's going to take a while to transmit. Take a while to transmit. Um, yeah, so. As I mentioned, ScanSat is not my forte, along with Gravity Assists, so uh, I highly recommend Like, I know that some other players like Boston Specimen Spiff are better able to do that. Did that add? That did add. Great. We're up to 155 science. Uh, we, can lock, we almost have enough science to unlock an extra node. Um, so 
so now we'll just go ahead and wait for that to scan enough of the moon for it to matter. Um, yeah, were it, in a, were it in a perfect 90 degree inclination, then I would think that after 14 days, i.e. it's rotated halfway, um, we'd get full coverage of the moon, but I was not on a full 90 degree inclination, so I don't know what we might miss. Uh, but it should be enough to complete the contract anyway. What does the contract specify? Contract specifies 75% uh, will easily pass 75% scanning the moon. Um, Alright, so now that we've verified our scanning, it's time to improve today's combustion. 21 days. Miniaturization, 186 days? Hmm. That would leave 100 days to construct our Venus probes, which I think is acceptable given our high build rate now. So I think it's worth waiting for the Ranger Block 6. So instead we... Is there maybe a geostationary launch we could do? Tundra orbit. No, I don't want a Tundra orbit. I want a geostationary launch. That's super synchronous. That's not even at Earth. That's geostationary network. Film return camera, both for Earth orbit and for lunar orbit. Um, so that's cool. Now let's go ahead and get a launch vehicle for it. There's a launch vehicle for it. Um, so we're launching to polar orbit. So let's subtract 12. Yeah, this is this is plenty of delta V. We will not burn all of our second stage just to get this into polar orbit. Okay. So build one of these. And then we need to basically do the same thing for the moon. Um, and the tragic thing, the truly tragic thing, is that we don't have a launch vehicle for that. Because 300 kilograms TLR, well, um, that's... I mean, we were throwing, what, one point... What is that? Yeah, 1.75 tons TLI. Um, we don't need a full-up launch vehicle for that. Um, I mean, really what we'd want to do is just boost this up some. But we kind of can't because there isn't much we can do to this. I mean, I guess what we could do, the cheapest option, is if we went and got our good old Catapult 3S. And that's 81.39 funds. Now, how much does the new one cost? Another four million funds for a capability we don't need. Um, that's distressing. Um, one wonders. Uh, I wonder what would happen. <laughs> if I just didn't have the second stage. A margin. Such that we can do a correction burn if we have to. If we're going to end up on the wrong side of it. Uh, what is 144 hours anyway? That's six days. Alright, that's fine. We've got plenty of delta V. Because we're not going to try to capture. Alright, 
So that's all lined up. So I guess in the next episode we can worry about um, Venus. Let's check the status of our where skin. Okay. We want the moon. <laughs> yep, we're just missing that chunk of it. Um Oh, we completed the moon contract, and I didn't even notice, I guess. Archives. Where was the scan contract? We completed it. Alright, which means we can get the science from it. And then we can pick what to spend it on. some money from that too. All right, let's analyze the data. And how's our science right now? Uh that's weird. Well, it was 156. We'll see if it correctly updates. 82 signs. Yep. Okay. It's not a very useful satellite here because Skystar 2 is right there. So we're actually going to want to, now that we've just done that, raise it right back up. Okay, that did not move us very far back. Whoa! Apparently we're not facing the sun correctly here. Whoa, we're really not. All right. Let's see if this is better. Yes. Now we're now we're sun aligned again. All right. So let's head back to periapsis. 
That was a close run thing. All right, now let's see how we're... Okay. So still 12 days until Robin, so we can do this for a while. This is how you adjust your geostationary constellation, is you just <laughs> do this a lot, basically. One thing that, because we actually get to see our Delta V very carefully, we get to design rockets to taste all that stuff, we sometimes get encouraged to um, not build margin in, and I'm certainly very guilty that I, I take considerable pride in like actually getting every last little tiny bit of performance out of things, totally optimizing my ascent, all that stuff. Uh, downside is if you do have a failure, it's very hard to recover. Um, because in real life, if you launch, you know, a satellite on an Atlas V and there's an RD-180 failure on the first stage, well, the Centaur might have enough excess propellant that it can just burn longer um, because it doesn't actually need all of its margin. Um, and that happened somewhat recently. So, five seconds to first stage burnout. So, as a general rule, I probably need to get better about into the habit of not doing that. And ignition. Now, that's an engine bell I haven't seen for a long, long time. Uh, up we go. Close enough to the Carmen line that we can stitch our fairings. Every single engine in the first stage fail. Uh, first one, of the, the center engine failed. Thank goodness it was the center engine for thrust balancing. Uh, then one of the side engines had a performance loss, and then it failed, and then the last engine failed because they were burning over the rated burn time. Um, I had to pitch up a lot because we had lower thrust. Um, second stage was fine. We got that into barely into orbit, but it meant that we had to burn Oh, about 300 meters per second off the probe's propellant to get us on our Trans-Mars trajectory. Uh, that was also due to MechJeb seeming to give me the wrong node information. Uh, so we burned extra, then we burned reverse again to get an encounter. Uh, and then lastly, uh, to top everything off, I looked in map view exactly how much it would cost to capture at Mars, just the absolute, absolute minimum, given the lowest possible uh, Mars periapsis, and it was about 45 meters per second more than the delta V of the probe if I hadn't burned anything. So I also underestimated just how much it would take to capture there, which meant that even had things gone perfectly, I probably couldn't have captured, um, unless I did some, some other hijinks, just because of how 
off optimal this transfer was. Uh, but we are going to complete our Mars contract, assuming that nothing else goes wrong, because we are going to complete this Mars flyby. Uh, we have a fine tuning maneuver in 34 days uh, where we will lower our existing Mars flyby altitude to something much more reasonable. I added some alarms for further uh, Mars transfers. This conjunction, conjunctive transfer, that's going to have a crap ton of excess velocity. And that was really only good for a flyby. This opposition one is probably going to have a maybe 2200 meters per second capture requirement, after which we can aero break down to um, something more reasonable. And then finally raise the periapsis up to circular. Um, really, though, we're not going to get a good number, I think, for a while yet. Uh, closer and more relevant, we do have a Venus window coming up, which is quite cheap. Um, it's in less than a year now. Uh, so we could send a Venus orbiter um, with, I think, fairly similar um, stats to the, the Mars orbiter that we just attempted, um, accepting the fact that we don't need to send any goo samples, because, bio samples, because we've already been to Venus. Um, so that's something to, to think about. Uh, we also can think about rejiggering that to include a ScanSat uh, scanner.